Hi, are you ready for seeds? I am beyond ready. I have a seed hole that is everything that I want to grow this year. Some of them are new and some of them are some that I grew last year, but I want to show you my plan to grow in seeds in my tiny backyard. First, I want to talk about how to store the seeds and I have way too many cases, but it's because I like to make it simple. So I have four cases and each one stores different types of seeds. So it is very easy for me to find the seeds. I have one that has herbs, radishes, beets, anything that is similar to that. And then the next one has the uh, greens, like salad greens and tomatoes. And then I go into the peas, beans, brassicas, and the last one has all my flower seeds. This method works really, really good. I, I really like it because I can preserve and find the seeds really well and they seem to stay nice and safe and in good shape. So I don't really worry about having four cases as long as it's really convenient and easy for me to locate them. I do use this little label maker my husband gave me a few years ago and I really love it. I don't think he bought it in Amazon or anything like that. I think I bought it locally, but if I find it, I'll link it below so that you can at least see it and see if you find something around where you're at. This one is convenient because it works through the phone, so I can take it anywhere and label the seed cases. But I don't like to carry these cases around, so every season I have a basket and this basket has little handles that I can carry it. The right side is the flowers, the left side is the food. And it makes it so easy for me to look for something and know that if I have a question or someone has a question, I can refer to it. Super, super convenient. And then I have a little pad with some extra information or notes that I just want to jot down to refer to them and just keep some pens in it. This is the best way I've found and I can kind of look at all the seeds from the previous season and work with that. I use so many different companies. Uh, Baker Seeds is one that is excellent. It's a little more pricey, but they do have uh, great information on the back. So I tend to go to them for more sort of rare seeds also. And I also love MI Gardener. Their prices are really good and the information they provide. I like that they have photos on it. I have a lot of companies that I love and I really like to support local companies. So I also look for the ones here in Washington, Oregon, but I will make a list and place it below for you. I'm going to start with the tomatoes, which I am in love with tomatoes and orange accordion is a tomato that I got a few years back. I think like two years, maybe. Yeah, I think probably around two years and I got it from a seedling. I could not find an heirloom accordion tomato anywhere, seeds anywhere. Back then it was two or three years ago. And I ended up buying a couple of seedlings and I paid like over $40 for this plant. I understand now that you hardly get any seeds from these tomatoes, but this is a delicious tomato and it hardly has any seeds. It hardly has any water in it. It's super meaty. A lot of people say that it's better for like cooking, but we love it just right out of the vine. We love it on tomato bacon sandwiches. So this is my favorite tomato that I grow. But this year I wanted to grow two new ones and I'm doing the tomato green giant. I just think it's pretty incredible looking and I just thought I want to grow a green one. And then Costoluto Genovese tomato. It's just because it's pretty. I will admit it. I think it's beautiful. I don't do any paste, any preservation like that. We eat our tomatoes and um, as they come. So I just wanted to go ahead and get some that I know we're going to eat. Now I have some unique ones that I want to grow. There's our, um, as far as cherry tomatoes. I am not gonna grow any cherry tomatoes on my curved trellis. They just take too much space. I get so many of them and my family just don't, they won't eat them. I'm the only one that eats them. I end up having to freeze them. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna use my arch trellises for something else. And I'm gonna do this tomato micro on my green stock. I'm gonna see how that goes, but I'm gonna put a whole layer of them and see how many I get. I did grow a different one that was a micro. This will be a really good one. Sorry, I heard something. I thought somebody was knocking. And then this is not a tomato, it's a tamarillo. It's a sweet fruit. And it says that it's delicious. I've heard about it like 
five times already and I'm gonna get it. It probably will not fruit this year, but I'm gonna still grow it uh, and just keep it in a pot and hopefully it'll get fruit in a year or two. And then the other one is uh, I did grow tomatillos. I grew the purple and the green one and those were really good, but I only wanna grow one plant this year. So I thought I'd get the queen of Malinalco because it's very abundant and it has like a larger fruit it looks like. It's kind of like pear shape almost. So this I'm super excited about. I hope the taste is really good. Now, if you know me, you know I love ground cherries. We snack on them in the garden all the time, but harvesting the ground cherries is as long as there's tiny little ones and you wait until they drop to the floor and then you harvest. So what I decided to do this year is that I got a bigger one. It's larger fruit. I think will be really good. If you go in my blog, actually, I think the first, yeah, the first video I ever made on this channel two years ago uh, has a ground cherry recipe that we love eating, but it's, it's in my blog also. I'll link it below. So I thought if I grow these large ones, they'll be easier to harvest. I only grow one plant and I can cut it in half each one to make the salad and have the sauce be inside of it. Maybe even better. I'm gonna grow this one. And the other thing, the reason that I don't wanna grow more than one is I grew the other ones in my garden beds and they grow so large and they spill all the way out. So they take a lot of the bed and I just did not want to do that this year because I want to use the bed for other things. As far as cucumbers, we love cucumbers and we want to grow a lot of it. But one of the things that we have here is that we don't get warm until about July and you don't see a whole lot of bees until end of July into August. So just pollinating the cucumbers is really a challenge. So I found it does not have to be pollinated. It has a very thin skin, so it's really good for snacking. And I was like, I am trying that because pollinating cucumbers here is just not fun. Bait alpha is another one that is seedless, I believe this one but it's really good for pickling and I want to pickle some cucumbers this year. This is a uh, delicata squash and I have, <laughs> I have all the seeds and it's because a friend of mine, she brought me a bunch of them that she got and they're like beautiful squashes. These are like from, I think she gave them to me September, October. I can't remember, but it was around there. And they're just fine. They preserve so well and they are the sweetest fruits. So if you're looking for super sweet squash, this is what I grow, grow on my, one of my arch trellises where I had the beans. I'm growing this. This is just super delicious and they last so long. I've been keeping those to show you, so I have not eaten them yet. And then the other one, I don't have a picture. I'll see if I can get a picture. But I buy some of my seeds on uh, Facebook Marketplace, but I also use Etsy when I'm looking for things that are more unique. So an example is uh, Facebook Marketplace. I got a honeyberry trees. I had two of them because you need two. And I love those honeyberries. They're so delicious. And they're a tree, not a bush. And so I can keep them in pots in my small garden and it'd be a great one if you want to grow some blueberries but i know they grow so big but that one is really good i'll put some images here and the other one is this one i found that i bought on etsy etsy is a great resource you just have to make sure that there's good reviews and you kind of read the little story that they give i think this one his grandfather or something started with the squash i can't quite remember the story but i know that it moved me and i was like oh i want to grow this and it is huge but it's called giant buca bucalem squash these are only five seeds <laughs> it's an heirloom but only five seeds so um hopefully they'll germinate okay but i'm excited about that and then Squash, the scallop squash. I really love the one I did last year was the white one. This year I'm gonna grow this one, green one, green scallop, benning squash. And 
I realized that the reason I want to move the ground cherries because I grew only one last year and you need three of them uh, to get some good harvest. So again, the pollination is a problem here, so I have to keep an eye. This is another one, it's gourd that I want to grow kukuchi. And it's, they, I've heard it's super delicious and tender. So I thought it would be interesting to grow this one this year. Hi, I'm Melba and I love to grow food and flowers in my tiny backyard. Peppers. I only eat the sweet peppers. I don't do any hot peppers. I'm from Puerto Rico. We don't eat anything spicy. So, <laughs> so I only grow the sweet ones. One I like is this um, purple beauty I'm going to try to grow. I grew another purple last year, but I just didn't get a lot from it. This one I'm hoping that will do better. So we'll see those changes of growing some of these in pots or the ground on the front yard will help. So the Chardonnay sweet pepper I want to grow again. I like this pepper, but the one I really, really liked was White Symphondale, I think it was called. And I got a seedling at a local supermarket. And it was probably the most delicious sweet pepper I've ever had. Thought I saved seeds, but I cannot find them. They have to be somewhere, I'm gonna keep looking. But I think it was a hybrid, probably not an heirloom, so I don't know if I'll get the same thing again. But the other one, Plant World Seeds, has a pepper lemon. I think this probably will be really good, the pepper lemon dream. I like that they're a little wider, so you just get more meat out of it, and so many seeds like this. Jimmy Nardellas is probably good. I think it's a sweet pepper, but I'm hoping that it's not hot. But when it's so skinny like this, it tends to have a lot of seeds. Uh, the next one is the shallots and onions. And I have a shallot. I really wanted to grow it, but I'm a little late. Uh, I'm gonna still try to grow it. The one that I'm excited is the onion, Lilia. This has a little purple bulb it just looks really interesting, very tiny, the onion itself. And then an onion entita, which is a bunching onion. Let's go through the snap peas. I always get excited when it's time to grow these because I know it's finally spring here. For sugar, magnolia, snap peas. I really loved this one last year. I'm gonna grow it again. And then this golden sweet, I have not grown, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. I wanna grow this vining one. It's called um, Dwarf Gray Sugar from Eden Brothers. And then as far as beans go, I am really excited to try to grow this Chinese red noodle. And I think I'm gonna grow this on the snap peas on my trellis, the flat trellis I show on the vertical growing video. I heard this is really good. Oh, they're really delicious so i am going to hopefully get plenty of those there's another one wing bean that i want to try this year and then i may not sure but i think these are really good these are um, some purple beans so those three this one is a question i'm not sure we'll see i am pretty much the snap piece the beans i'm going to grow directly so i'm not going to grow them indoors salad greens i have to think of my bunnies so i have quite a few of them i have this kale das dazzling blue really pretty and it looks like the leaf is not super thick which i prefer and then i got some free seed butter crunch from baker seeds they give you some free seeds and then lettuce winter density i may start these earlier my favorite lettuce really delicious but the snails and the slugs do not eat it which is a plus because i have such a big problem here because it rains so much it's the merlot lettuce i really love this lettuce i grow a lot of it every single year and then I'm going to grow some Lunix. And because it's the same color, it looks like it's smaller leaves. I thought it may be a good one to grow. 
they gave us it's like a type of romaine lettuce it was a free seed package i'm gonna try it and then i love this pablo lettuce i think it's beautiful so i'm going to grow some of these devil's ear lettuce really beautiful purple with a little bit of hint of green okay so the ones that i'm gonna try that are totally new jimmy misai is some type of green it says that it is really tasty it's a super food a lot of vitamin a just like carrots and it has kind of an umami velvety taste I grows is cold tolerant also which is great here because it stays cold for so long one that i'm really excited is they call it spinach strawberry sweat it grows these berries on it so it's like a spinach leaf and it has like berries and you can eat the whole thing well, i was so excited when i heard about that one and then marshmallow i guess this is where they get the marshmallow um but it has these little flowers so pretty i thought i tried to grow this on a pot perennial an african native original source of an egyptian confection with which evolved into today's marshmallows but also eaten as a vegetable so i thought that was super interesting and carrot wise i i don't know last year i got so involved with all the things that i did not grow carrots but this year i'm going to grow some carrots i'm going to grow the atomic red because i think i want some orange carrots and then they gave a, a free coral seed package and then i everybody everybody sees growing this one lila lu sang gorgeous carrots i can't wait to try that one and one that i think would be interesting is the manku Manpukuji carrot and it grows really deep so i thought on my really deep bed it would be perfect all the herbs all the herbs is i'm gonna do a lot of holly so my plan is to work. i have this green vertical garden that is just the pockets i'll try to show an image but what happens is when i water that it requires more watering like more often as it starts getting warm and the dahlias don't because the tubers hold a lot of water so i want to go ahead and move that where the gravel is with the other ones and then there i'm going to put some uh, planter i may ask my husband to build me a custom one we'll see uh, but i want to grow a lot of herbs and things that are more for tea so it'll be my, my tea corner but i'm growing holly basil i want to grow a lot of this and dry it for next year for the winter so i have a bunch of dill in my grow area i have dill and cilantro seeds waiting to be put away and i still have not done it so i need to get to it but i am going to grow dill i love dill because if you have issues with pollinators i let it bolt so i grow plenty of it so some of it won't bolt and some of it will bolt and the pollinators love it so the cilantro and the dill are perfect for the pollinators so i i am going to grow more cilantro this year i had a hard time getting it to get going but i'm going to start early uh maybe next week to try to get it going and then basil i have this cardinal basil which i thought was really interesting Isn't that pretty look at that it has these flower heads that are like this purple red color but it's pretty big and you can use them as flower arrangements so I'm gonna try to grow this one in pots of this purple ball because i've grown other purple but this one is like more dense looking it has these little clusters gorgeous and i have a shisha red which is a mint uh it's from johnny seeds um shisha red mint and then another thing that i want is a lot more sage but I want white sage and I have not grown the white sage. I grow all sorts of different colors that I absolutely love. I grow it both for ornamental, but I also grow it because it's good for cooking, but there's so many beautiful ones with like variegation and purples on it, soft purples like a lavender. But this is the white sage. 
I don't have any of it. And I found this company. It's called, um, it's in Oregon. It's a local company and it's called Strictly Medicinal. It's edible flowers. So I'm not gonna go, like I said, over flowers. So, but I'm gonna go over edible because I love them. So this is Petunia Superbissima. And I grew this one last year. It, they're so beautiful. The trick is that I didn't do this because I got I didn't pay attention. And I you need to just cut them at the beginning, just like a normal petunia, so they bush up. The seeds are super tiny. I mean, you can't even see that. I kind of tested it last year and ended up loving it. The other one is people don't like to grow this. I know a lot of people don't like it. I don't know why, but narcissians, they're absolutely stunning i think they're beautiful and what i like the most is that you can eat the flower my bunny loves the flowers i do too and the leaves you can eat them you can make a pesto out of the leaves which is great or you can use them as wrap they have a peppery taste to them and take the whole plant and like ferment it and you can use it as a pesticide but the best part is that i had this all over my garden because I do not like marigolds. I tried to like them, but I don't like them. So I grew this all over because I have an issue with aphids because it rains here so much. And it was incredible. I got no aphids anywhere except for the narcissians. And I'll show you images. I mean, they were like so full by September. Uh, but the flowers were fine, mostly in the stem and some of the leaves that it goes. And I just would snap the leaf and cut it or cut the whole thing out and and get rid of it but let let them come in because these, they're just concentrated on those plants and didn't go my bunny's eating sorry um they didn't go to the rest of it so the one that my absolute favorite is cherry rose jewel this is it looks like little ruffled roses almost they're so pretty the color is so beautiful and the other one i really like is Alaska red shades. So I'm growing bush type narcissians. Um, I don't want to grow the vines. I did grow the vines for one year. It was great. I did it on my secret garden over here and it grew all along and I harvested all the seeds because you can also eat the seeds. I make capers out of the seeds. It was really good, but it just taste, takes over. I did the vines because they grow even more to me than the bush. Um, but it did take over, it was a lot. So I'm not doing the vines this year, but this Alaska has a variegated leaves. It's absolutely stunning. Look at that red, so pretty. And the last one that I love, I had this one last year and I could not get over how beautiful. It's called Orchid Cream and it looks like an orchid. Look at those colors, so pretty. It, it looked exactly or even more beautiful on the picture. Sometimes you see the picture and things are not the same. And then borage, I did not grow any last year. Um, the year before that, I think I had the white one. I'm gonna grow the blue one. If you haven't grown this, the pollinators love it, but the flowers are really good. They, they taste like a cucumber flavor. So I want more edible flowers for salads and for my bunny. So I am going to grow this in a pot don't grow it if it's not in a pot because it will spread like crazy i grow it in a pot but where there is like no grass or no soil around uh, so i do it on my patio and then fever few i grew fever few uh, last year i do grow chamomile but the chamomile spreads it grew on my path and it did so well i harvested a bunch so i ended up growing fever few on the pots and it looks just like chamomile and uh, it does have some benefits to it. So I ended up getting from Floret Farm, I got the Fever Fuse Snowball. It's Vegmo Snowball. So instead of being open like the chamomile, it's like a little pom-pom. And I thought it was really beautiful for flower arranging, but also you can, you know, have it for medicinal purposes. Okay, let's go to eggplants. So I'm between two right now, which is Aubergine Long Purple. I just got this one. I heard it's really delicious. And then the Chinese string, um, I did not grow it last year. I ended up doing the miniature eggplants and it did really well. 
So I may do both and place them on the really big trellis in the center of my round bed where I grew my orange accordion tomato because I, I like to test stuff. And then the other one is Rosa Bianca, which I'm going to grow on the patio on a pot. It doesn't have a picture, but it's called Rosa Bianca from Eden Brothers. Calitz Garden Mix. The small two inch little florets grow on a main stem. And then the Russian Red Ragged Jack. Absolutely stunning kale. I like these kales, it's purple. To me, they taste really good and they're thinner. And then the Scarlet, I've always grown this one. Really good. And then I'm gonna do a basket of different radishes. I did not grow any radishes or carrots last year. I don't know why. I was just into growing other stuff and I didn't grow it. The Swiss chard that I like, I've tried the rainbow one and it just doesn't grow that great here. I don't know why. But the pink does great and my bunny loves it. She loves the stalks of the chard. So I cut them, I cut the top, give it to the quails. Um, and then I take the stocks and put them in water and I give it to her as a snack because she's a beggar. Grow this one. I have these two uh, kohlrabi. One is purple delicacy. It looks like it grows wider, takes more space. So I found this one called Blower, I don't know, Blower Speck, and it has specks of green and I think it's more compact. So I may end up growing this one. And then I got a free packet of bok choy, which is great because I keep trying to grow the purple one. And my, for some reason, the slugs and snails love it. They just, I cannot get it to grow here. But the green one, they leave alone, which is really weird because the lettuce, if it's purple, they don't touch it. The green one, they eat it all up. If you're finding value on this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help grow the channel. Trying to figure out where I'm gonna plant this. I don't know if I'll be able to grow it. I'm gonna try. But hibiscus, I'm gonna be redoing the front to grow more veggies. I'm gonna grow this purple Brussels sprouts. It is called Brussels sprouts red ball. Isn't that pretty? I cannot wait. And I think since we have sun on the front, it will it'll grow. Strawberry Monster is like a really big strawberry. And this one, I'm excited too. I keep saying I'm excited, but <laughs> it's growing season. Tom Thumb Lettuce. It's like three to four inches across, so it's really tiny. This, it looks like Brussels sprouts, but it's a lettuce. I have a few seeds that I forgot to show you and I just got some of them. So one is calendula. I grew this zeolite last year and the year before, but they grow all over. I don't need to start new seeds, but it's really beautiful. I really like them. So this year I may try this strawberry lawn. It's very similar. So I'm curious to see how it looks. But the one that I really want to grow because of the medicinal, I can do different things with it is resina. And I want to grow it to do balm and lotions, things like that. So I feed the calendulas also to my bunnies and quails. I want to grow the butterfly pea. This is a double blue. I did not grow it last year, but I want to grow it to place it for my tea containers. And I'm also going to add a lot of time to my garden. All right, that's it for seeds as far as food goes. I have a lot of flowers. So if you're interested in looking at flower seeds and seeing a hole, let me know in the comments below and I will do that Always next. Always remember to keep living your dream in that small garden.